Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending September 17th. This first article is from CNET News. As usual, all the links to the articles will be in the description below the videos. Pegasus Global Holdings is getting ready to build a ghost town in New Mexico. This will not be your typical ghost town, but this will be a modern city built to house a population of around 35,000 people minus the people. The city is going to be called The Center, and it will be used by scientists and researchers to test new technology such as next generation Wi-Fi, energy consumption in a controlled type of environment, and self-driving vehicles. The cost for this city is going to be around $200 million, and they're searching for locations in the Albuquerque and Las Cruces area because there is access to the north, south, and east, west corridors for researchers uh, to use getting to the facility. If you look on a map of New Mexico, you'll see they're located near several government facilities, which I believe is no coincidence. DARPA may be bringing money into this project in the future, too, with the self-driving vehicle experiments. Pegasus also plans to make money on this project by charging private researchers to use the controlled environment city for tests. The site will be chosen in 2011. They say by the end of 2011 they'll have the place picked out for the site and it's going to be finished by 2014. I think that's quite ambitious for the undertaking. Some of you might have remembered there was the biosphere in Arizona which was a closed-in type of environment for habitation of possible planned Mars um, facilities. Well, um, that actually took four years to build that, and I think the total cost during the time they ran that was close to $200 million. That was the size of two and a half football fields. So I think they're asking a little bit much to get this thing built as quickly as they do. I hope the Discovery Channel actually gets a chance to go to the center and actually do some documentaries and some science shows on this because it looks really interesting. Next article up is about the entertainment industry, and boy do I have a lot of rant about the entertainment industry and how they rip off consumers all the time. But the original guy, I don't know if some of you know his name, was David Prowse that played Darth Vader in the original three trilogies that were first released. Well, they have told him, they send him letters from time to time about residuals, as most actors get in movies, and they have told him even up to this time the Return of the Jedi, which he played in, has not turned a profit or made any money, so they're not able to pay him any kind of residuals for his acting in the movie. That, to me, sounds a little bit ridiculous. I went on Wikipedia just to check the facts. They said it grossed $572 million, and if you look, from 1980 to 1990, it was the second highest grossing film of all time. The only thing that uh, the only film that beat it was E.T., The Extraterrestrial, in 1982. It's number two right behind that. So to tell them that they didn't make any profit whatsoever, there is a, definitely a scam going on here. Some people talk about the fact that the industry sets up holding companies, separate shell holding companies, just to expense off things to and to charge fees, just so that they don't have to end up paying the actors in the film that helped them make the money in the first place. So that kind of ticks me off about the way the entertainment industry and I, uh, I have no problem with uh, ranting on them any chance that I possibly can get. They, they have a lot of nerve even calling consumers um, rip-off artists because of the fact that maybe you take music that you already purchased on your CD and put it on your MP3 player. They think you should buy the MP3 also. And, and a lot of us have bought albums, bought the same music again on tapes, the same music again on CDs, and yet we're looked on as we're some kind of uh, scum thieves because we take in one of those sources and actually make it into MP3 for our own use. We should actually pay them more money for the same song over and over and over again. But anyway, that's enough of my rant on the entertainment industry. I'll have plenty more time to do that. So anyway, this week... I'm being joined by my co-host Mick, Salacious Shadow is his channel on YouTube, with another story of what's happening in the land down under. Take it away, Mick. Thanks, Chuck, and g'day, everyone. This week I bring you a story about a couple from Caloundra on the Sunshine Coast here in sunny Queensland. Some 25 years ago, they decided to invest some money in some gold jewellery, which today was valued at $50,000. Here's the husband, Jeffrey, whose surname remains anonymous. He works as a truck driver, and when his truck was broken into and his sat-nav, which contains his home address, and his house keys were stolen, he naturally feared his house was going to be robbed. So, 
He raced off home where he decided to hide their investment, plus his wife's jewellery and their family heirlooms, in three garbage bags. So, the next day, he and the kids were cleaning up around the house when the kids accidentally threw the garbage bags containing their fortune into the trash can. A couple of days later, when they realised that their booty was missing, they contacted their local council landfill, who, although they were sympathetic, refused their request to conduct a search. Sucks to be you, Jeffrey. Anyway, back to you, Chuck. Thanks, Mick. My last story comes from the Los Angeles Times. This was sent to me by Navy Thomas 8, my friend Tom. Scientists find a planet orbiting two suns like in Star Wars. Well, it's not exactly, they call it a Tatooine-type planet, but this planet, if you uh, read the article, it's uh, first off, the, the system is about 200 light years away, and the planet itself is about the size of Saturn, but it's not a gas giant. It's actually a rocky planet. So I would imagine the gravity would have to be quite something to contend with. So if there was a possibility of any kind of life on this planet, it would have to be something like maybe viruses and bacteria at best because of the effect of the gravity. You couldn't have humanoids walking around on this kind of a planet. And uh, let me give you the name of it here in the article. It's called, uh, if I can find it here, Kepler-16b. And like I said, about 200 light years away. Uh, they think it's a frozen world of rock and gas about the size of Saturn. Orbits two stars that are also orbiting close to each other. That's the one thing, too, I think, in these kind of systems. You're going to have to have two stars that are orbiting fairly close to each other and then a planet orbiting farther away so it doesn't get perturbed by the uh, gravitational pull. But I think once you're far enough away on a planet system, uh, the, basically you're just going to be being pulled by the center of mass between the two stars rather than... Uh, uh, having to go into some kind of a weird type of orbit to stay stable. It just depends on the distances and all that, but this is a uh, pretty good start, really, that we may be able to just not look at star systems that are just single star systems, but you may have a lot of dual star systems that have Earth-type planets. If this is the first of what we found, we're bound to find more, and as the technology and the equipment gets better, we're bound to find planets that are even smaller and possibly more like our planet. So anyway, link to this article is down below. That's about it for this week. Take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.